We are speaking with Age Sten Nilsson of the band Ammunition. Some of you may remember him, of course, from Wigwam. And the show must go on, a, a tribute to Queen, which is uh, in Norway, I guess, right? Yeah, we've been doing this uh, this tribute show uh, since uh, 2007. So we have this 10-year uh, anniversary now, and we're... Uh, we're closing the show down uh, in the late March to, for me to have more time to do ammunition and my solo stuff. Yeah, so let's let's get right into this. In 2014, around I was or 2000, beginning of 2015, depending where you were, there was a. I was looking for new music, and I had I had run out of all my my love for the Kiss records and the Aerosmith, and not that there's anything wrong with them, but I just needed new music, and so I asked. Andrew McNeese over at MelodicRock.com. I said, oh, yeah. Well, "Yeah, you know Andrew." Yeah, and I said, yeah. And I said, "Give me, give me some albums." So he said, "Okay, try out Wet with uh, Eric Martins and try out, uh, you know, all those other. What was the other band that he does? Uh, Eclipse." Yeah. And then he said, "Try out Ammunition, Shanghai," and I did. And that album, which is hard to find these days, is fantastic from top to ball and when you hear a song like give me a sign or shanghai or hit me with your bombs you go ah that is pure <laughs> melodic rock that is so here we are now it's uh, 2018 is coming up and you've got a new album and is it simply just called ammunition ammunition is that is it self-titled it's self-titled and so it kind of feels like a fresh start with this uh, with with, it, with this album because you know the the first album we we started to record that uh, Actually, I started to write it in 2012, 2013, some of the songs, and uh, it was pinpointed for for a Wigwam release. That never happened. So uh, instead of, you know, I, I'm, I'm constantly touring, so instead of trying to <laughs> trying to get to learn the studio things, you know, <laughs> I'm... I'm I'm not a smart ass on the studio uh, and the technical stuff. So I went to, to Sweden to uh, to record some demos and I uh, found myself in Eric Martinson's studio. And it happened he was a huge uh, Wigwam fan and he had actually sent us a CD with the band Wet to try to get some support slots for us uh, way back. And uh, so we started to record some demos and, uh, and we even started to write some songs together. And then uh, uh, Wigwam broke up, and we decided to form a band. And I remember him uh, suggesting Glamunition as a, you know, a band name. And I said, you know, it sounds more ammunition than Glamunition. And they were, they were. were. Uh, so we called it Ammunition, but I had put my name in front of it. So it was Augustin Nielsen's Ammunition uh, on the first album. But, you know, uh, throughout time, you know, uh, during the process that we've been working together, we become more and more, you know, from a band, you know, a real band. So uh, for this one, we've, we've uh, got rid of the Augustin Nielsen name and it's simply ammunition. So it feels like, the, you know, the first album uh, that really has been written and recorded as an ammunition album. Yeah, and which which also means I'll have to go into my uh, iTunes playlist and and take off the H. Del Nilsson. <laughs> yeah. I I still call it, but but I've had a chance to hear the new album, and it really is fantastic. And and I know it's it's way too early to start talking about albums of the year for 2018, but I can certainly see that being in the top ten by the time we get to December of 2018. Um, wow. Musically, is it something that you're directing yourself? Is this your project? Because Eric Martinson, of course, does great stuff with Eclipse and other bands. Or did he have some say in this? How, how is, do the albums sort of come together? Uh, this album uh, came together uh, by me going up to, to Dalarna in Sweden. Uh, very nice place. And I've been living there for like, a week or two and going back to Norway. So pretty much uh, Eric and I will get together uh, with the two acoustic guitars and start from scratch on this album. Uh, and, uh, and we simply just wrote the, the, um, the whole al album together uh, that, that way from the scratch every song and uh, just uh, hitting each other with different melodies and harmonies. And, but we had decided that we really wanted this album to be uh, 
quite different than the first one. Even you, you can hear it's the same band, but on this album you can hear it's it's slightly more classic rock than the melodic rock thing, and it's uh, it's less the Wigwam flavor. Uh, it's less g glam rock. Uh, it's more rock, and it's a bit more gritty, I think. And um, the the sound is drier and more straight into your you know straight in your face, I think. So, um, but we we didn't put any boundaries to to the sound uh, to the songwriting. So we we didn't limit ourselves to to you know. In either way, we just wrote songs that we felt like writing at the time, and uh, we brought in all the guys, and uh, and you can hear, you know, the sound of ammunition on this album. Yeah, really great. Now, in terms of the future, what is sort of your hope for this band? Because you also recently released a solo album, Smooth Seas, which is very, very different. In fact, it, it, well, in fact, we'll, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it, it is, are you sort of focused on a solo career? Are you focused on ammunition? Are you sort of focused on whatever comes my way is what comes my way? How do you sort of see yourself moving forward in, in 18 and in 2019? You know, uh, my main priority is ammunition. Uh, so uh, if I could work 24-7 with ammunition only uh, and survive as a musician, uh, I'd be happy to do that, but let's face it: we're uh, it's a it's a new age. Even though I'm the old age, and, you know, <laughs> uh, so, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so um, my idea is to go out, uh, you know, touring with Ammunition. But have to face it: we're a pretty fresh band, and uh, there aren't too many gigs yet. But I hope they will come in and we'll, we'll be able to travel around the world uh, with this music. Now we have two albums to, to pick from, so it's, uh, it's a much, a much uh, easier thing for us to do. I mean, the live show is, we have more possibilities. Uh, at time, times being, we, we are playing a lot of, you know, the Wigwam stuff also. We do like In My Dreams and Hard To Be A Rock and Roll. We, we'll probably uh, keep on doing, doing those songs in the live set anyway because nobody plays in my dreams live anymore uh, and it was a huge hit so but um, regarding my solo career it's it's a totally different animal it's um, when I write songs for my solo albums I I um, usually sit down on the piano or with an acoustic all alone I write all the lyrics and the, the music myself and it's more personal uh, with the ammunition, it's more riff oriented. With the solo, it's more lyric oriented and uh, you know more melancholic. But you know, I'm I'm happy to do both. But, uh, and what I'm focused on is it's two different animals. I mean, ammunition is for me to go out there and rock my ass off and have a good time and to present you know the music I grew up with. For the for the solo stuff. It gets more personal. So uh, right now I'm going to do a couple of weeks uh, here in Norway, totally acoustic, all by myself, acoustic guitar and some piano. Just sit down, tell stories about you know um, all the trouble that I've been in, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you know. Let's face it: when you're in the late 40s, you know, you lived, lived, and you look back and uh, on your life is. It's uh, it's so many stories you like to tell people, so many things that people don't know, uh, and uh, so many many experiences that you like to share. So, so that's that's a different thing. It's more like to keep keep life in balance. I remember with the wigwam, I was doing the you know the glam character twenty four seven, and it almost killed me. I mean, being so focused on being that crazy smart ass, <laughs> uh, you know, um, and I remember in 2006, I re-released my soul album, and I put on my 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 old man's shirt from the 60s just to try to. I mean, for me, it was kind of a symbol. I tried to connect with with with, with myself, you know, after living with the, that crazy animal for 
for quite a while. So, <laughs> yeah, with, with the character, it's, it's, how how do you build a new band in this day and age? I mean, is it all just sort of social media and doing interviews like this and just getting out in the clubs? Because it's got to be hard. And and you're in Norway. I can imagine trying to get over to North America to the states and Canada is going to be even harder than than just building it in in Europe. So, how do you approach it now? Um, the good thing about you know social media is it spreads pretty fast. So and now this album is uh, finally released on a on a big uh, big label. The first album was released uh, you know on a, my own label and with uh, we, you know, some, some other labels uh, involved though. But uh, it was very low key. Uh, and low budget, so um, and, uh, and fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> Shang, and is, Shanghai and, was great. I mean, you, you got to re-release that. The thing is, now I, I'm, I'm I'm still own the rights for the for the album, and I I paid the album and I, I invested in that album. So hopefully, uh, I want at a time, you know, uh, after a couple of years, maybe people will start to discover that album, and uh, and I I still have the rights for it. So. So uh, I invested in that album because I wanted wanted us to have a start, and I didn't want anyone to get involved with the band until we were kind of ready to, until we knew what we were going to become. And now we have finally, you know, set things straight, and we we know what ammunition is. And and the first thing we did to build the band was, uh, you know, I I, I produced a lot of shows in Norway, uh, music shows. Uh, like the the show must go on the Queen show. I have produced a number of other shows in Norway, also, and uh, one show uh, in, uh, in special uh, it's called uh, Rock and Roll Adventure. So I thought, you know, hey, we have this new band. Nobody has heard of us before. Um, let's let's do this rock and roll adventure thing, which is a uh, is a history of rock and roll from 1965 till uh 75 so i brought in the guys so we, we were the band and we had some uh, guest artists as, as well pretty known here in norway so that well, that's the first thing that we did uh in the theaters uh presenting to opening the whole show with two or three ammunition songs and we'd have, have the, the 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 speaker the host um you know saying you know this was ammunition but where did they get the inspiration from? Let's go back to the very start of rock and roll. So we had each night we had a chance to present new material to people, and then getting you know um, uh, you know getting to know each other music wise and uh, you know uh, through through the old music that we grew up on. So uh, that was a good thing, and we started to do small gigs, and we actually went on our first tour in Spain and was great i mean in, in barcelona a lot of people came out there and you know it was almost packed and and we started to do the festivals and you know so it's it's building yeah and and by the way i see that you have that that kiss poster over your shoulder <laughs> you you you've had some uh some a brush with greatness you opened for kiss i believe in oslo yeah. or or somewhere uh, yeah, we, we won. Uh, yeah, and and you covered "I Was Made for Loving You." So just quickly, uh, with Bruce Kulick on guitar. With that Bruce Kulick on guitar, yeah. So so quickly, <laughs> just talk to me about your love of of Kiss, because that everybody loves Kiss. You can't not love Kiss. Uh, yeah, I love them, but I, I I think it's it's time to pack it up. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to move on. But um, quickly, the show must go on with Queen, the the Queen tribute. Uh, Talk to me about putting together a show like that and just because trying to, and I don't want to say copy uh, Freddie Mercury's vocals, but but presenting a show that, that features, you know, songs that he sang, that's got to be very challenging because he wasn't just some chump. I mean, this is Freddie Mercury. Um, I, yeah, so, so, it's the big shoes to fill. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and just talk to me about putting that together and what sort of compelled you to do it. Why not? A Kiss tribute. Why not? You know something else. A Led Zeppelin show. Yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. Because um, back then I was 26 years old, and I remember I did some solo stuff back then, and I constantly uh, received messages, you know, uh, or reviews saying, you know, for my shows I did, you know, some 
uh, you know, top 20 shows around in Norway, you know, uh, with other, other artists. And they were like 15, 16 years old. So I was always, uh, you know, called the, the, that old rocker, 26 years old, that old rocker, you know, the dinosaur. And uh, I even tried to to um, uh, to make it to record the music that I wanted. But, you know, the record company, they they wanted me to to record, you know, um, uh, music for like an old audience, the mature concept, you know, and. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to rock, rock out. And so I released it through my own company and tried. It was a struggle. And then I almost gave up. And I thought, you know, uh, okay, maybe they're right. Maybe I'm, I'm too old for this, uh, you know, for this music industry. So, but hey, what about, you know, making some music shows? So I put together an Eagles show with Jorn Lande uh, and uh, Otta from Midnight Choir and Eirika Haugson from Arts. And a great band, and I put together a Creedence Clearwater um, show with Jan Grot from uh, from uh, he's, he's a legend in Norway from Aunt Mary uh, and stuff like that, and uh, and uh, some other shows. And I thought, hey, I, I really want to be in a show too. <laughs> so, and I was a Queen fan as well. So I thought, you know, what what more perfect band can you can you do a tribute to? I mean, they have. All the genres in the world, you can you can make what you want out of the Queen music. Like ten years after we had the premiere, we have now played seventy eight songs, and we still could have done like hundred and twenty, you know. Um, so I uh, I put together that uh, show and uh, I didn't uh, I didn't premiere it until two thousand seven when Wigwam did a break. And it was meant only to be like five days, just for my own sake. I'm not, I mean, I, I wanted I wanted that journey. I wanted that, you know, experience. So I put together a, a, a choir and some dancers and I, we had all that shit. And uh, the the five, five ticket, uh, five nights, the tickets just, you know, they were sold out in a couple of days and uh, five more and then five more. And then suddenly it was a year. Cool. For for those that haven't heard Wigwam before, first of all, you you you're missing out because the albums were great. Um, is the band completely over? I mean, do you see yourself maybe in ten years going, oh, okay, let's let's do a twenty gigs, or is it is 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 it so sort of bitter and acrimonious and just you don't want to visit it again? It, it's it's your youth. Like, where are we in terms of that? You uh, you know I'm. I would really like to see that happen at one time, you know, to 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 do a gig or two or maybe a, even a tour. Um, after all the quarrels that we had and the, you know the bitterness of us breaking up, and it was, you know, I've, I've talked to you about that before. Right, but but uh, we forget as we get older. I mean, you know, what was important when we were thirty doesn't really matter. Yeah, of course. But uh, you know, I, I, for me now nowadays, it's it's much more important to have fun and to work with people that are, you know, uh, feeding me inspiration, uh, you know, and I, we had a coffee a year ago, the Wigwam boys, and uh, I remember I said, you know, let's put everything in the back burner and would, would you guys care for, I mean, we never got a chance to say goodbye. Should we go out there and do a small tour just saying goodbye and and move on. We doesn't need to. We we don't need to to get together for for a hundred years more or long tours. Just some gigs and just just to make up for you know that you know a you proper know that, a proper goodbye. Yeah, but you know when you when you uh, when the reactions are like oh or you don't know. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I brought it up. And I, I won't bring it up again until somebody else is is giving me that call saying, "Hey, should we really do it?" I mean, we we had at least I have received so many offers, uh, you know, from uh, everywhere around the world, uh, and uh, and I know Tronomy could easily write a new song or to bring out a best of album or whatever. But you know, I'm I'm not the guy to to um, 
to call out for the guys. I've, I've, uh, I have uh, offered them, you know, uh, and I, I've a peace uh, offering. I, yeah, not not a peace offering, but I've t- I tried to convince them that that would be a good thing. Uh, not this year, not next year, but maybe 2020 or something, you know. But um, uh, and especially, you know, especially with a with a label like Frontiers out there that that supports bands like Wigwam, like Ammunition, like uh, Eclipse, it would be easy to get an album deal and an al- anyway. It is what it is. Um, yeah, we have talked about it too, but you know, right, right now I'm so focused on you know building this band because it's a, it's a brotherhood of men. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we have a good time together. We make music easily together. Everything is smooth. We, I mean, in my Queen show, I have our guitar player John and and our keyboard player Lasse uh, work together in the the Queen show as well. So we see each other all the time. This weekend we're going up to to Trondheim where our bass player Victor lives. We're gonna start writing some new songs, not because we need to, but because we want to. We want to spend three or four days together, locked inside a, a, a whole uh, a room, uh, a studio, and eating together, drinking together, have a good time, writing some material. If it's gonna be yeah. one song or fifteen songs, don't know. And and we still haven't released our second album yet. So I mean. But it's we like to work. I just came back from now from the studio. I've been recording two new solo songs, because you know there's a lot of inspiration and you need to get that music out of your system. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Do it old school, like like Kiss, two albums a year. And uh, just quickly, <laughs> uh, we mentioned, of course, Eric, who's in Eclipse and Wet and all that. Who else is in the band currently? Because uh, we've made a change on drummers, and you've got a guy from TNT in there. Yep. Oh, what happened was um, right before we went on tour in in Spain, uh, Robin had an offer from Mustache, and uh, we weren't making that much money on on the ammunition shows. Needed the Eclipse, so he needed he needed a change. He also lives from music. I mean, I have my my you know uh, corporation gigs and whatever, and the the Queen shows and my solo stuff. So uh, I did I did okay, uh, but he really want wanted needed some more work uh, we couldn't give them that because there were too too that much offers for either eclipse or ammunition so he he went to mustache to make a living and that's fair enough it was straight before us going to spain so we really desperately needed a new drummer w- was in contact with uh john macaluso uh, from uh, symphony x uh, he also played in tnt uh, f- for a while he came down there uh, and it, <laughs> it just wasn't happening. I mean, he didn't play good and he, uh, his attitude was not good and we had to send him home uh, after the first gig and we desperately needed another drummer. So we, we called out for Magnus, you know, the bass player of Eclipse. Uh, we knew he had heard the songs before. He was familiar with most of the guys in the band, and um, and uh, luckily he had a chance to come down on that short notice. He came in, he, he went down this very same day we called him. I'm coming, <laughs> the rescue team from Sweden. So he sat down and w- w- we did the Barcelona first night and he was awesome. He really, really played well and uh, and we were really connected. And But after a while, uh, also Hal started you know, to, to um, be a pain in the ass to be, be quite honest I mean never showed up weren't that interested he was more interested in working with his uh, son's band which is uh, easy sure. to understand but you know you have to pick up that phone and you have to um, I mean it's hard to organize all of, you know the, our flights there are things that needs to be organized and when you never pick up the phone and you never know if it's gonna if he's gonna if the bass player is gonna show up that's pretty hard so before going to Switzerland, he hadn't answered my any of my calls. I needed to to book uh, the flights, and he never asked. So I called up Victor, my old friend from TNT, whom I've been talking to for almost a decade about about you know getting together and forming a band. And he was ready, and he loved the album. And he came in. We rehearsed on the hotel room the night before we did the first show in Switzerland, and he even did the background singing. 
after that game was like, oh, now we're bad. Now we're bad. And uh, and Victor and I, we're, we're, we're like this. We, we talk to each other on, tel- on phone every day, at least one or two times. Not only about music, but, you know, about everything. Uh, and And it feels like, when it feels like you, your band is your private friends as well, and you like to invite them over for a beer, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great work environment, I gotta tell you. And yeah. uh, and of course, the album comes out on uh, what is it, January twenty sixth, I believe. That's right. And we just released our new single, uh, Freedom Finder. Yeah, it's a great song. And even though I've had access to the album. I'll let you know that I have it on order from Japan because it has a bonus track. And I, yeah, have, yes. I have to have everything. So there you go. Uh, always a pleasure. And boy, whatever I can do to help to bring you over to North America. I mean, it's it's a tough nut to crack. But hey. If, if you know, I was supposed to play in, in uh, close to Chicago this year, this autumn, at the Rock and Skull Festival. But it never happened. It never happened, yeah. It was... <laughs> No, some... <laughs> it changed the venue and it was it was crazy. I had to learn from from the internet that you know Ace Frill was taken off the bill and then Steel Panther was taken off the bill and they, I mean there were hardly any bands left and <laughs> and uh, I didn't even know that I was taken off the bill as well. I could see my name. I mean with a an X <laughs> sign. It was X. I was like, what's <laughs> happening, dude? Am I playing? Yeah, you're still playing. Yeah, but you have to send me some tickets or whatever. I'm, I'm I can't hitchhike down to to Chicago. It never came, so I um I kind of I I took a week off holidays instead. Well, it probably <laughs> it was, was good for it you. It was kind of all right. I really needed it. So it and um, smooth seas is of course available now. Um, after the the uh, ammunition album comes out. Is that the next thing another solo album or another ammunition album? Uh, it depends on which album uh, we're successful. Uh, finished first. <laughs> but my 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 hope is for for us to to release an, a new ammunition album pretty quick after this one. I agree. Uh, there's so many songs lying there waiting to be recorded. So, but also it depends on you know now we have to see you know do we have an audience. Do we have people who wants to come and experience this band live? I mean, that's one of the things, you know. Uh, so if if you're out there listening and if you you're into our music and ammunition, I mean, show it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and and, and I'll, I'll agree. I mean, the the, the first album, not, Shanghai, is great, and this album is great. You gotta go check it out if you like. You know, your rock. What would you compare yourself to? Because I, I don't want to say Bon Jovi and Def Leppard because that's not what it is. Huh. Um, well, what can you say? It's, it's, it's like kind of Guns N' Roses with the, with the Led Zeppelin yeah. Free. Maybe a yeah. bit of Free there. We all have the love for Free and... I read somewhere Bill Squire people, you know, get the kind of Bill Squire yeah. feel. I mean, I mean, we, we kind of just feel like we're free to do whatever. And a song like like a Caveman, it's of course a bit heavier, though. But you know, we have songs like like uh, for example, uh, Time, which is a very you know, it's it it doesn't remind me of anything. It's like and uh, Gung Ho is. It feels kind of fresh. You got some disco stings in there. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's 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 a great it's a mix uh, of everything that we like. So it's let's 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 give it the definition. It's the ammunition style. It's the ammunition style. It's rock and roll. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And uh, anytime we'll do this again. Always uh, looking forward to that. And of course, uh, you can tell Eric that I'm also looking forward to the new Wet album. I'm. I'm Oh yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that's going to be fantastic too. Let me tell you one thing. One of the songs that we wrote for the ammunition album that didn't quite fit fit the album. It's it's on the wet album. And it's great. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, I don't know if you say this in uh, Norway, but in Denmark we say tack. So uh, tack. Uh, thank you. Tusen tak, Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you.